Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dr. Preer and we are going to go over chapter two, which is promoting and preserving psychological health. And I think this chapter is probably one of the most important chapters that we will cover in Health 11 because your mental health truly does impact your overall physical well-being. So please pay attention. I really need you guys to grasp the concepts in this particular chapter because they have extremely intricate benefits and implications as we continue to go through the rest of the book, okay? All right. There are so many definitions to psychological health, but the one that we will focus on is this one and how psychological health is the sum of how we feel, think, relate, and exist. So instead of thinking just about your mental capacity, think about yourself as a total human being and how the way you think and react and, and relate to people impacts your everyday activities and movements, thoughts, and feelings. So these types of uh, definitions include mental and emotional health, which are not the same. Mental and emotional health have some very distinct characteristics about them. They are oftentimes used interchangeably, even with health professors and psychological or psychologists, psychiatrists, people who work in, in mental health care, but they're, they're actually quite different. And there are some social and spiritual dimensions as well. Come on slides. So now we, we get a breakdown of what these different types of, of psychological health components are. Your emotional health is literally how you feel. So when people say, get out your feelings, this is what they're, they're talking about. Moving on to the social health realm, this is more of the effective domain with people. How do you relate, interact, coincide, and get along with other people? or not get along with other people. Some people are just more introverted by nature. Mental health, how you think, rationalize or don't rationalize. They have a lot of interdependency here. And then your spiritual health, if that is something you take seriously, some people discount this aspect altogether, but spiritual health and religious health are not the same thing. They're different categories. Spiritual health looks at you from Think meditational state, mind body exercises, meditation, things that calm your entire body, your thought processes, your feelings. It has a direct impact on, on your respiration, heart rates, things of that nature. So spiritual health, it's a little fluid situation there, but all of these aspects impact your psychological health. Looking at some of the aspects contained here, this list is non it's, it's not all inclusive. Most of the experts look at aspects of people who have healthy psychological health, what they consider to be healthy. People have a positive self-image, not narcissistic, positive. They, they are confident, they feel good about themselves. They're comfortable in different situations. They have compassion and empathy. They, they use their compassion and empathy. And compassion, sympathy, and empathy are, are also not the same thing. Sympathy is, I feel sorry for you. Empathy is, I understand and relate to what you're going through. And that has a direct impact on how you interact with other people and how you feel as a result of that. Psychologically healthy people, can they can meet deadlines. They can meet life's demands. They can go about their daily tasks, accomplishing all or most of their tasks they they curb hate and guilt they don't um bring others down in order to uplift themselves they value differences they they can disagree without becoming disagreeable for example if i don't agree with something you say i would not attack you as a human being i would upgrade my argument or find holes in yours to point out um, so but they wouldn't attack and that is a value of diversity, not only of the individual culture, but also diversity of thought. So they're critical thinkers and they can appreciate the world that doesn't look just like them. Here we have Maslow's hierarchy of needs and this particular pyramid expertly dictates or depicts exactly the order of importance that we place things such as food, shelter, safety, interpersonal relationships, self-actualization. It, it ranks those in order of most importance. And generally speaking, you're not going to see somebody attaining 
self-actualization before they have basic security. Your survival needs on the bottom can also be classified as basic needs, and that is food, water, sleep, exercise, sexual expression. Sexual expression actual was actually wasn't even on this hierarchy of needs when I was in school. So we can see the evolution even just in the last couple of decades. And exercise is there, but it's very obvious from the rates of chronic diseases that a lot of people simply are ignoring that part of the survival pyramid. But it is there mainly though, think food, water, and, and sleep so that you can rejuvenate as a person. And then up that tier, we come to safety and, and protection shelter because you can have survival needs but still not have a place to live. Up from there, we have your social needs, which are you having a sense of belonging and, and affection and acceptance towards other people, whether it is in a group setting, a church setting, a community setting, school setting, etc. Up from there, we now have your self-esteem needs. Uh, your self-respect, your your self-pride, your respect for other people, the things that you have done that you feel proud of, awards, accomplishments, graduations, things of that nature that really build your confidence. And then lastly, we have the top of the pyramid, which is I have arrived. I am all that in a bag of chips. I'm a whole snack, a whole meal, all that. You're creative, you're, you're spiritual, you're, you're social, family, whatever your expectations or, or dreams or desires of you have, you have fulfilled everything that you have set out to do. And self-actualization takes a long time to achieve. It's not a instantaneous type of thing. So your mental health, it encompasses all of those aspects. And it's also something that, you know, mentally healthy people can can take those aspects and and whatever the challenges of their environment or their job they can adapt appropriately and not go off of the deep end they can understand life stressors and have responsible ways to deal with stress and to deal with problems rather than something that is completely unacceptable irresponsible and sometimes even illegal your emotional health, because there is a difference, as we stated earlier, and this is how you feel. So get up, get up in your feelings. This is the time to get in your feelings. It's not the same for everybody. Your your feelings are subjective, and my experiences are different than yours. Uh, some people have a, a variety of feelings about law enforcement, the legal system, the educational system, politics, and that can impact mental health. And of course, it's it's subjective but your feelings are still your feelings and they impact your health. So it's important to be able to understand those things and and have a healthy way of, of expressing any sort of stressors that would impact your emotional health. These emotions, any sort of stressors really can, can throw you out of balance. So now let's look at emotions. Love, hate, frustration, anxiety, joy. These can all be complicated because some people feel anxiety with a test and some people don't. Some people feel love with a gift and some people feel love with uh, words of affection because that's their love language. So you see that the complexity of these matters is very, very um, different for, for a variety of people. And this is why we have to take time to understand ourselves and our partners and the people we get in relationships with because sometimes we just don't mesh based on who we are as individuals. Emotionally healthy people can deal with an emotional setback rationally and healthy versus those who struggle to to keep their their feelings and emotions under control and then we have that intelligence factor which is directly related if you don't know that you have a problem there will be no help for you no hope is on the horizon for you because part of that is just accepting number one that there's something there and maybe a little tinkering should take place. But if you're not able to identify that, you know, it's called denial. And then use that information, that identification to seek help or to recognize that maybe I should engage in this activity versus this one. Maybe if I have road rage, I should let somebody else drive. Then those types of things really do have a negative impact on your overall emotional health and can eventually, you know, cause you to downgrade into a situation where you might have to see a mental health professional. Now looking at um, psychologically healthy and unhealthy people, unhealthy people are the complete opposite. They don't recognize it or they do and don't care. Um, they have little zest for life. Energy levels can be low. 
Um, you can tell in the way that they talk or they laugh that it's not genuine. They may have forlorn expressions. They may be hard to be around, uh, or they may be awkward to be around because you have the selfish narcissist and then you have the socially awkward individual. And both of them can be symptoms of someone who has an emotional setback and may need help. I want you guys to continue to, to go over these slides on your own because we're not gonna go over every aspect. Um, this These slides are quite lengthy and I actually erased a few trying to get through them. So there'll be three different sections of this video lecture. Social health. Now, this is probably the one that extroverts thrive in because extroverts have a tendency to pull their energy from crowds, whereas introverts are drained, literally drained socially, emotionally, and everything else physically from being around large groups of people. And some people have a great balance between the two. Socially healthy individuals can be around people, family, friends, any environment really, and they can blend in. They're, they're chameleons or they are just naturally blending with no thought of um, being the star. Uh, they can listen, they can talk, they cannot overwhelm a conversation, they cannot look bored, they know it's appropriate. Um, they have social graces. They may study the culture of an area before they they visit that area as to not offend. That's also a part of um, intelligence, social intelligence, which is not particularly listed on, on these slides. So when we look at the social bonds, these kind of reflect the relationship that you have with an individual. And the closer the bond or the deeper the bond, usually the longer you've known the person, but not necessarily. Sometimes it's just the connection. Sometimes you guys might um, mesh over a critical issue. And that goes right into support because bonds can also be introduce individuals to support systems, support groups, other political groups or parenting groups, educational groups, tutoring sessions. We have Moja here at Pierce College. And those bonds to form individually with people can oftentimes be reflected in resources later in the terms um, in terms of social support and networks which can also be extremely valuable when it comes to job searching after you have graduated. As we go into spiritual health, this is quite often discounted, very often discounted, but spirituality doesn't mean going to church or going to a synagogue or a mosque. It's, it has a much larger um, umbrella meaning than, than simply religion. And so looking at this definition, we see it's an individual sense of peace, what is my reasoning or purpose for being here? What am I supposed to be doing? What um, gifts do I have that I can be contributing to the world, which is my purpose? Um, my connection to other people, how I not only speak and interact with them, but how I actually connect with them on a one-on-one -on -one, um, level and how you feel about life in general. You know, do you think life is just all fun and games or do you think it's more serious or think we have a higher purpose? These are all parts of spiritual health. So whether you're religious or not, you still have an aspect of spiritual health that needs to be investigated so that you can understand yourself as a total person. We look at uh, spiritual health referring to sense of belonging to something greater than physical or personal dimensions. That can have a strong religious connotation and whether or not you believe in it is a personal subjective experience. Nevertheless, it's still something that uh, for your own personal health should be investigated. And you may come to the conclusion that you don't believe in anything and that's okay too. So many different factors influence our psychological health. And one of the most prominent is family. Your family history is something that even a medical doctor will ask you because of any sort of genetic predispositions that you may have. So when it comes to psychological health, understanding your family and that we may have a tendency to do X, Y, and Z, or we may have a predisposition to this because it's just a genetic factor because that's what our parents also struggled with. And part of it is environmental. Your support systems, community, friends, families, the bonds you form with people, all of these things factor in because now we're looking at self-efficacy and self-esteem. And if you don't have a high level of self-esteem and people are spewing negativity into your life or you're, you're constantly uh, 
cycling a negative mode of thought, these are the types of things that can really have long lasting negative catastrophic effects on someone's overall psychological health.